Hello, it's time to press delete on the modern age to put our keyboards down to pick up a quill or more conveniently a fountain pen and to embrace a writing style that hasn't been seen since the 19th century. This is cross writing or the act of writing in two different directions on your paper very popular when you were trying to get as much information as you could out there and to pay as little postage as possible so let's get into some of the techniques and how this writing style worked So we're always looking for new and exciting ways to use our fountain pens and what better than a new way to write a letter that's just interesting and compelling. And I found that there's more to it than just turning the paper. There are some techniques and tricks that you can use to make your letters look more beautiful and more legible. Okay, for our tools today, we're going to use this Claire Fontaine Triumph paper my Magna Carta Mag 600 fountain pen and some lined paper for behind your letters so that you can keep your lines at least somewhat consistently straight. So one of the things you can see that I've done here is I'm writing very wispy lines and you want to keep them as uniform as you can. You're going to need some space for writing in between them. So you'll see that I did not use very thick lines underneath. I kept it kind of wispy and uniform. I wanted to be able to write in a different direction and to show some contrast. And often you do this with size or with thickness of line. So let me show you what I mean. So now I'm bringing in the larger pad because I'm going to need more lines that can cover the entire paper as I write in a different direction. So one of the things I'm going to do here is write a bit larger and to use some flex. This way my writing will stand out against that which I've already written. Even still you can only sort of pace yourself so much here you can only make it around the other words so much. And at times you just need to be brazen and just write right through them. So you can already see that it's starting to really show up. And you can see it with just a little bit of noise in the background. So whenever I have some negative space, I try to use it so that the overwriting isn't conflicting too much with what's underneath. But if you get a little too carried away with that, your words get sort of comically large. Now don't be too afraid of it looking a bit messy or even sort of indecipherable because it's certainly not going to be as clear as the kind of writing you would have normally. Often it didn't cover the whole page. It sure looks cool when it does. 
and I'll show you some examples of that. So here's an example of a letter I've written on top and you can see that you can clearly read what's underneath and the overwriting is a bit of an obstruction but it's still very legible. So one of the interesting things about cross-writing is that researchers are often complaining about how difficult it is to read. I mean, cursive can be difficult to read to begin with, and now you have it coming at you from different angles. In fact, I'm going to read part of this quote from Jane Austen's Emma, and it says, In general, she fills the whole paper and crosses half, as I've just done. My mother often wonders that I can make it out so well. She often says, when the letter is first opened, well, Hetty, now I think we put to it to make out all the checker work. So the thought here is that it's a little bit of a deciphering to get the meaning out of it. And I think that's part of the fun. So if you're going to write in this style, just embrace it. Think of it almost like a secret code. And if somebody really wants to read your words, they will ponder over it. They'll derive out the words and the meaning. And I think they'll appreciate the struggle of deciphering it and kind of the beauty and the interesting nature of having two different angles of writing. So just have fun with it. And the funny thing is that the myth is sort of that it was about saving money on postage. And I think in some cases that was very true. But aristocrats use this method of writing as well. And in some cases, people would write on the diagonal or they would do it straight and diagonal. But this is sort of the most basic form. It's just writing in a different direction and slightly different size and different emphasis. But clearly legible both ways, if a little bit of a struggle, occasionally to differentiate certain words. But very beautiful and very interesting. So this was the first example. I'm going to show you a couple more techniques just so you can try this on your own and have a bit of variation. Here's another letter I wrote for this one. I use an even wispier hand and a very light hand to write this one. And since it is indeed 2024, hard to believe, there's no reason why we cannot use two different colors of ink which will really differentiate our writing against each other. So let's take a look at that, shall we? So here we can clearly see the difference. The use of two different colors really goes far into differentiating our writing. Certainly clear in the oxblood, what I've said there. And this is uh, Kyo no Oto, I believe, ink. Very pretty blue, very faint, but also very legible beneath. So this is a really nice way of putting a modern spin on a 19th century writing style where it's clearly legible in either direction and just sort of really interesting. I just wish I were brave enough to try the diagonal, 
Wouldn't that look brilliant? So here's another letter I wrote. This has a lot of negative space and you can try to draw between it. We'll give it a shot and just show you a bit of sort of an exaggerated smaller writing to larger writing and see how they mesh together. So here we have a very nice example, the wispy black writing and the overwriting in dramatic oxblood. Clearly legible, but certainly a different style than what we're used to in 2024. But imagine if you spent the time to write a full letter two different directions, maybe multiple pages. It almost looks like a little word puzzle or something similar. And as you practice with it, it will become more legible and even more interesting. But it's certainly a nice riff on your regular writing, something you can do that will really shake things up in your next letter. I particularly like this blue and oxblood combination with a fainter ink underneath and the gorgeous oxblood on top. Suppose you could try it vice versa as well, but it's the contrast I think that really makes this writing pop and makes it interesting. So I would put this in your toolbox of writing, different things to consider and different uses for your pens and your paper. As we discover even more interesting things to do with our fountain pens, papers, and inks. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe. There are a lot of videos like this in my catalog and we are going to be going to some pretty amazing places in the future. So come on this journey with us. And if you'd really like to support the channel further, become a member. There's all kinds of interesting and exciting things going on behind the scenes. I'd love to see you there. So I make new videos all the time and I have a live show each Tuesday night at 8 p.m. So I promise we will see each other very soon, further up the road. So take care.